Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're going to do some more work on the Tamiya Bullhead. We've got the stock build complete now, so it's time to start on the mods. The stock chassis is an old design meant for a 6L NICAD pack. They run across the chassis using the end caps to hold it in place. As a system it does work, but it's really not the best looking. Also, modern LiPo packs aren't always a very good fit. So we're going to change around the chassis to fit these 5 amp hour 2S LiPo packs. And while we're at it, we're going to swap the stock single ESC for two Tamiya TBLE 02s. For now, we'll just stick with the brushed motors, but these ESCs will run censored brushless motors in the future. Another little niggle with them though, Tamiya say they're only for Naimai packs. But there's a fairly simple, albeit fiddly mod, that you can do to make them LiPo friendly. Not too surprisingly, we've got a few 3D printed parts to make all this work. First is a set of parts to blank off all the holes we no longer need in the chassis. We've got switch blanks and blanks for the battery holes. And lastly, we have a new electronics tray and battery holder to bring the battery inside the chassis to really clean up the appearance. With any luck, by the time this video is live on YouTube, there's going to be some links down in the description for files on the Thingiverse. Okay. Before we start fitting things, we need to take the stock parts off the chassis. For the electronics tray, we need to remove the receiver, of course. We stuck it down with servo tape, so it's easy enough to carefully pry off with a small screwdriver. The tray itself needs its four self tappers in the corners removed, and then we lift it out of the way so we can get to the power switch and remove its two M2 screws. Now, as we lift the tray away, we disconnect the motors from the ESC, and we're left with a rather empty looking chassis. We're not quite done yet though, we need to unclip the battery cap from this side and from the other side we need to remove the four screws and nuts holding the other battery cap on the chassis. And there we go. Now all we need to do is block up all those unsightly holes. First is a blank for the old power slash economy switch hole. It offers up from the back and we use a pair of M3x6s or 8s to screw it on. It's got a square that sticks out, so it ends up fitting close to flush to the outside surface. Next is the blank for the battery hole. Now this version has two holes for the ESC switches, but hopefully there's going to be a blank one on Thingiverse 2. It all depends if I have time before the video goes live. The blank fits in with the stock screws and nuts from the outside. On the other side of the chassis we have the smaller switch blank for the power switch hole. This one uses a pair of M2 screws. The ones that come with the kit work just fine. And for the last blank, we have the removable end cap. Now this one doesn't have any convenient screw holes, so it comes in two parts. There's one bit that sits inside the chassis and fits snugly across the hole. Then the plate goes on the outside and uses two M3 by eights to clamp the two parts together. And that's about it for the blanks. You could print them in red if you really wanted to hide them, but I quite like them in black. They're kind of a nod to the old stock setup, but still make the chassis a bit less lumpy. Next up, the electronics tray. Now it's in two parts, so there's a nice slot to fit the 5 amp hour LiPo underneath. The tray has a set of recesses to fit two TBLE 02s and a 6 channel FlySky receiver. There's another version to fit an 8 channel that'll be handy for other types of radio too. The recesses are there, so when we stick down the electronics, they're going to end up perfectly square. Remember, this truck's going to be more about its appearance than performance, so every little helps. The battery holder sits under the tray and gets attached with six M3 screws. The length isn't too critical. Anything longer than 12mm will do, as long as they don't go all the way through. Here, I think I use some m 3 by 20s the end of the electronics tray with a lump on it matches up with the open end of the battery holder. Now to stop the battery falling out we have a little lever that just swings down. To attach it we use another M3 screw, again the length isn't critical, and we also use a pair of washers. A nice one with a large outside diameter is good for going between the lever and the mount, but a bog standard GP1 will work just fine too. It's important here not to tap the hole all the way through the mount. We need the screw to be stiff as it goes in. We need to set the tightness so the lever is stiff to move so it stays put, but not so stiff that we can't move it at all. When it's on, it should be something like this. 
Now it's not going to be the strongest battery holder ever, but again this build isn't expecting to be launched off ramps at high speed, it's for cruising and bouncing around, so it's going to be plenty good enough. Next we have the ESCs. I'm using these partly because I'm trying to save some pennies, as I've already got them, plus their Tamiya, which goes with the truck quite nicely, but mainly because they do both brushed and censored brushless motors, so they'll still do the job when we do a motor upgrade. They do have a problem though, according to Tamiya they're not LiPo compatible. It sounds like an end of the world scenario, but it's not as bad as you might think. The motor driving side of things is more than up to running off a 2S LiPo. The difficulty comes from the cutoff voltage. Out of the box, the ESC will happily run the battery all the way down to 5 volts, which with a NiMi is a little low but recoverable. If you take a 2S LiPo down to 5 volts, you'll almost certainly do permanent damage to your battery. A lot of ESCs have settings for the cutoff, but not Tamiya. Thankfully, Tamiya used a really simple voltage divider in the ESC for monitoring the voltage. It's just two resistors. If we open up the ESC, which is just clipped together, so careful use of a knife to pop the clips off is all you need to do. We can see the back of the PCB, and the bits we need to fiddle with, while very small, so not for the absolute beginner, it'll still be a fun project if you're up for a bit of a challenge. Now I'm not going to detail this mod here, as Laneboys RC has a great article and video already, so I'll link to that in the description. In essence, all that needs to happen is we add an extra resistor between the centre of the divider and a ground point. Now because we've got two of these ESCs to play with, we can do a nice little experiment. Here we have one ESC modded and the other one still stock. That means we can hook them up and see what the cutoff voltages do. To connect the two ESCs to one battery, we need a Y lead. Really easy to make, or if you search eBay, you can buy one ready to go. Just make sure the connector genders are the right way round. We need to plug the ESCs in one end and connect the other end up to our power supply. For now, we'll just lay the bits across the chassis just for testing. Connect up the motors, connect the ESCs to the receiver, remembering to disconnect the red wire from one of the servo plugs. We don't want the two BECs to fight each other. Now I'm using two channels on the receiver for the ESCs, one each. The upgraded firmware on the GT3C has a dig mix feature which lets us select rear, or and front wheel drive. There's not a whole lot of point on a monster truck, but it's still going to be fun to play with. Anyway, now it's all connected up, we can test the cutoffs. With everything switched on and working, I'm going to apply a little bit of throttle to get both ESCs running. Then very slowly turn the voltage down, simulating a battery going flat. Okay, at around 6.5, 6.4 volts, our modified ESC cuts out. A nice extra safe voltage for LiPos. As we keep going, eventually the other ESC cuts out at just a touch over 5 volts. Definitely not good for LiPos. And of course, if we pick the voltage back up, both ESCs start up again and we're back to all-wheel drive. Couldn't be better, we just need to mod the other ESC. And here we go, after a bit of conformal scraping, an 0805 resistor, a bit of wire and some Kapton tape for safety, we have both ESCs modded. We can clip the cases back together, and they're ready to fit. The rest of the install is typical RC stuff. We just need to clean up the tray and the bottom of the ESCs and radio with some IPA to get rid of any grease and oil, so the servo tape sticks nicely. Then we just peel and stick some bits. The recesses make sure everything's nicely spaced and square, so it's all nice and simple. There's also a couple of holes at the end of the receiver for the wires to go through, so there's no ugly rat's nest. Now, I've still not worked out what to do with the antenna though, so that's going to come later, probably. The red wire on the servo plug on one of the ESCs that we disconnected needs some insulation to make sure it doesn't find its way to something it shouldn't, so we'll just use a bit of heat shrink to cover it up. We end up with one of the ESCs connecting to the receiver with a ground, power and signal that supplies the radio and servo with power. The other ESC just connects with a ground and signal pin. Now we connect up the battery Y lead, and there's just about enough space to servo tape the XT60s to the side of the battery holder to keep them out of the way of the steering servo. Not a problem if you've got axle mounted servos of course, but we haven't got that far yet. 
To install the tray, we need to fit the two ESC switches to the battery blank with the switch holes. The M2 screws already in the switches are going to work just fine. The blank is fairly thin, so they're more than long enough. Just for fun, I'm going to use one of the on-off stickers from the ball head kit, just so we know which way to switch them. Next we have the motors. Now the TBLE O2s have three motor wires for brushless motors, but in brush mode we only need two, the blue and yellow. Connect them up and position the wires to avoid the steering servo, and we can line up the tray on the chassis and install the four screws. After a bit of arranging, we have a fairly tidy looking install. There's still lots more electronics to come, but for now I think it looks pretty good. Except for the antenna. Those chunky dipoles on these radios really make them quite awkward to mount. From the back of the chassis, we can post the battery into the battery holder and move the lever to lock it in place. Plug the battery in and we're ready for a test. So I've already got the transmitter turned on. We just need to switch on the two ESCs. Now remember I said I set up the dig mix on the radio? Well, here's what it does. From power up, we're in four wheel drive as normal. Both ESCs get the same signal. If we push the switch on the handle, we can move the dig mix to minus 100, which gives us rear wheel drive. Now if we hit the button again going in the other direction and move the dig mix to plus 100, we get front wheel drive. Now, honestly, I'm not really sure what use that's going to be on a monster truck. Rear wheel drive might provoke some donuts, but I think that's about it. But it did seem a shame having those two ESCs and not setting it up with independent control. So, there we go then. That's the first couple of mods complete. There's still more to come, of course. All trying to keep the essence of the old clod slash ball head, but bringing it a bit more up to date. That's it for this week then, so as always, thanks for watching, like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!